Well, follow that. Uh, after what is it now, 43, 44 years, um, we're still in garage band territory. Um, and as many of you would have noticed, the uh, the lady you passed on the door on the way in is indeed Tessa. So, uh, questions? Questions? At the back, sir. Yeah, uh, um, I'm not sure if this is a question or an observation. I'm in a punk rock now band with people of all different ages because of feral places like yourself. Great. Which is amazing. And I've I just noticed recently while we were touring, every female band that we come across on every poster we see says female fronted. And I just, I just want to see what your thoughts are on that, because to me that's sort of segregation. I think yeah, I don't like that. I think we've moved on. I don't think we need well, to. Well, yeah, I would hope we have. And the day fem uh, people don't say, oh, what a shit female guitarist, or what a rubbish, or what a great female guitarist, will that day ever come? It's kind of depresses me because it's just so obvious. I understand and, why they do it. Yeah, because it's like, it's still a gimmick, isn't it? Exactly. Which is kind of depressing what to me. <laughs> I mean, either you're good or you're rubbish. What would you say to like a new female punk band if they were thinking about doing that themselves? What would you say? <laughs> I even find just being a punk band, I mean, no offence to anyone, I just find it out of time. Because we didn't even like, it was a media word. We didn't call ourselves punk. So it's a bit strange that people are still calling themselves punk. I mean, I can see the influence of punk, but I would rather hear a new word. I mean, I just think it's time for a new uprising of younger people. It, it, now, the time is right now. There's so much to be angry about right now. And I'm just patiently waiting. What is going to be the next breakthrough revolution of the young people. Because of what you did in the 70s, uh, it's definitely evolved. I think now, the young people's, what you would call but now is grime. Grime is the new Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't understand it myself, because I like your kind of stuff. But what do you think about that as well? Sorry, well, to me, the whole thing is about evolvement. Even the slits, you know, we started as a punk rabbit's ears, <laughs> punk group, but we evolved and kind of shed the skin of the punk label because I hate labels. To me, the most important thing is to keep evolving like as reggae has done throughout history. The present great thing about reggae is crime, obviously. So to me, it's all about evolvement and I just don't like these labels. Like we got labeled as feminists, I can't stand that. It doesn't mean that we don't want women to have more power, but it's it's just another label and that and that limits you as to what you can do as soon as you put a label on it so I just want to be free of labels for the future I mean obviously each movement the media tries to put a label on it so people can understand it but if people would just do something different where you cannot label it that would be exciting does that make sense yes thank you Direct question, but thank you. No, it was a good question, very good. Anyone, there must be some more. Polly! Hello. Hello. Polly! <laughs> come forward, come forward. <laughs> Polly is in a group called The Berries. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Uh, do you have a idea of what the Oh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I think we're probably just too difficult to deal with. <laughs> well, first of all, we didn't have a great deal financially, the, the deal we signed with Ireland, but we compromised to have total creative freedom, 100%. That's why we could do the cover we could back in 1979. Um, 
my memory is terrible. Uh, it would be interesting if you if you asked each member, but you can't ask Gary everything. Why did they drop us? I think we were just too difficult. Yeah. <laughs> no creative reason, because we were pretty damn good. <laughs> On that note, actually, who were your influences or mentors when it came to learning the bass? I can't name one individual, but the huge influence, as I think it's probably clear in the movie, was reggae, because we were soaked in reggae music in the 70s. Thank, thank you, John. <laughs> um, and to me, that was the biggest influence, was reggae. Um, I, I wouldn't, I never name one person, I mean the most obvious would be to say Robbie Shakespeare, but it's not, there's just, in Jamaica there's just so much talent, whether it's music, poetry, dance, to this day, and I think Jamaica influences so much of the music and creative arts, it's just unbelievable that such a small island can have such a huge influence on the rest of the world. Big up Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Uh, just, just Do you have a, a favorite gig ever in your mind? One that you love so much? Just the questions I <laughs> Well, I did love Ali Pani. I was talking to Steve about it the other day. Um, partly because I think we were at our peak, we had Bruce Smith on the drums, we had Nana Cherry, and I think we were just reaching our peak, and then shortly afterwards we split up, so to me that is probably my favourite, if I have to give a favourite, I guess it's Ali Pally, Alexander Pally. Or well, next week. Or well, next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting. Before you met the, the slits and formed, who, who, who was your, like, who did you listen to as, like, a little kid? As a little kid, just a real mixture, because you're talking about your, what your parents are playing, so yeah. it's a bit of classical, it's a bit of Arthur Kitt, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday. Obviously, we heard a lot of the 60s music on the radio that we'd hear all the time. Um, as a little kid, particularly, my first ever record was Tubby the Tuba. That, that is, that's not a band, that's a sort of made up story. Um, just an eclectic mixture, I have to say. Radio, obviously Beatles were big, because I was, I was born in 1959. Um, so those were all the influences, the 60s groups. And um, what my dad, my parents split up, so I was hearing a bit of classical, a bit of other kid, you name it, Nat King Cole. But you're not thinking this music is influencing you, but obviously it is. There's two there. Fight it out amongst yourself. <laughs> Mostly reggae, I have to say, but I'm, I'm sort of rediscovering the blues because I never really paid too much attention to blues music, so that's very exciting. Or Fela Kuti, I just try and keep an open mind. And so I'm revisiting a lot of things that I didn't really dis uh, discover when I was younger and looking in more detail, world music, I mean, I just have a very open mind. Something similarly, um, I know you said you like to see bands doing something exciting. Um, I just wondered if there are any new kind of upcoming bands as well, getting excited about at the moment. I'm a little bit out of touch, I have to say. <laughs> uh, but I have to always say Nana Cherry, I love what she does and her new album Broken Politics is genius. I don't think she's ever sold herself out. I think she always comes up with something new. I love Massive Attack. 
I'm just not so in touch, so I don't want, I mean, I need to listen to the berries, I haven't discovered them yet. <laughs> I'm sure they're fantastic. And I love chronics, if you're talking about latest sort of recent Jamaican music. It was a bit sort of like being in a comic, like the Bastrick kids and the St. Trinians. <laughs> but we got the harder time. I mean, I think it's mentioned in the documentary. But no, they were a load of fun, obviously. Um, we seriously got the rough end of the stick. I don't know why. <laughs> but it was amazing to have the opportunity to play in front of a really huge audience that I don't think we would have had unless we were given that opportunity, so that was great. And yeah, but we just had a laugh. It was fun. We were kids, you know, it was fun. Were they, um, were they cool to you? Were they nice to you? Yes, they were. They were. Our male peers, I mean, we had the Buzzcocks, Subway Set, The Clash. They were all really respectful towards us, I have to say. That was actually my question, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I've answered it already. Yeah. Psychic vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where did you get all your clothes? Charity shops, <laughs> the other slips. I didn't have hardly any money, lived in squats. I mean, I know they're having a go at me in the documentary, but I didn't have a telephone. I didn't know what was going on all the time. <laughs> um, just a mixture. Yeah, a lot of charity shops, Port Bella Road. When you don't have money, you just have to be very creative and inventive with your clothes. And no one ever dressed you? You always dressed No, we were never styled, never. That was the days before styling, really, punk. Mm. And then styling came zooming in. I look a bit rubbish right now, sorry, I'm not making much of it. <laughs> Very interesting question, I like that. So, as anyone who knows about heroin, it, it's extremely hard to, you can't just stop. Like, you can't just make your mind up, okay, right, I'm gonna stop. It's a long process, but the thing that helped me the most was a friend of mine who asked me to do martial arts, the teacher. He did a rolling break fall on the pavement. Uh, my daughter was in the same class as his at school. And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I did jujitsu for 15 years. And ultimately, that did break the habit. <laughs> so I'm gr very grateful to this friend. And I would advise it, yeah, to anyone, I think martial arts, I mean, you have to get obsessed with martial arts as you were obsessed with your drug. So for me, that's what did it. I'm a black belt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're playing on stage, where do you go in your mind? What are you thinking about when you're When I was playing, because I don't play anymore. <laughs> oh, I DJ now, that's similar. What do I think about? Yeah, what, what are you in your head? You I think you just try and go off on another planet in a way. I mean, when you're playing an instrument, you're focusing 100%, you're focusing on the drama, the singer. But the best thing is when you can just let go. I mean, plus just the more you practice, which I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> um, but I like it to take me off so I'm not thinking words. It's just taking me somewhere else and then you feel really good. And Uh, what were you thinking on your first ever gig? Terror. <laughs> well, the funny story between Palmolive and me, there's actually a photograph where she's looking at me like, what? We're, we're both playing a different song. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to remember, I'm not a formal musician, and I literally picked up the bass two weeks before, so I just had to learn it like a parrot. 
and I don't even own the slits for two weeks. And then suddenly you're thrust on stage and the clash of headlining, I mean, it is pretty terrifying, but you just gotta try and stay cool, that's why I'm chewing gum. <laughs> Any more for any more? Well, I just, I did, was it you or my upstairs? Just want to know, did you find that emotional? Was it emotional? Yeah, yeah, yeah very emotional. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's good, because you know, it's been an emotional experience. Doc. Yes, Doc. What is the actual industry giving you a recognition? What recognition have you had in the industry? In the industry? Yeah, music industry itself. Not a great deal, I have to say. Oh, I don't know, that's a bit of a difficult question. I don't think we've been paid the money that we've been due. But so have so, it's the story, the whole story of music from way back to the blues times. <laughs> it's a typical story. Do you think you was a bit before your time? I do, absolutely. Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> I think we're starting to get more appreciated now. Unfortunately, I would have loved Ari to feel that a bit more. But when we did reform the group, I realised we've gone through all the generations to, to really young people, 20. And in one of the Q&As I did recently last year, there was an eight-year-old from Brazil. <laughs> And she asked me to sing a song, you know, one of us did songs. So I gave it a try and it was okay. But that just, that was the best feeling to have an eight year old who's come all the way from Brazil. I was, what more could you want? Just a random one. Yeah, random. Yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, I've got a, a Liverpoolian friend who said the same thing, so maybe I'll try for this. Yeah, it's a good idea, thanks. You said how the current day is kind of a grim and crazy time, like in the 70s. Have you got any advice? For Anything that we should get behind? Um, just get up, stand up, fight, 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 fight. <laughs> I just, I just feel, I don't, I don't mean this as condescending, but it does feel people are a bit brainwashed with technology, because I didn't grow up with that, and I'm pretty hopeless. I don't own a mobile phone, I just about email. But I think it's making people's brains a bit lazy and, and taking the fight out of them. I just want to see more rebellion, you know. There's so many things going wrong in the world, as there were then. And I think things go in circles, and it feels, it just definitely feels the right time now. Yeah. I can just say a word there, because of what I do, I, I find myself talking to quite a lot of uh, quite young people in my terms about things like rock against racism, and they quite often respond with amazement, you know, that sort of 40 years ago we did those things. and. You know, I mean, music can be a force for change. Music can be a force for good, you know? And the more we use it, the better it'll be. Yeah, I absolutely agree about music. I think you can't underestimate the power that music can have. And that's what I'm waiting for, is to see the next thing, yeah. Doc, as we're moving, what is the highest media reception movie feel? It's been on any terrestrial TV at all or anything like that? It's in America, it's for free on Hulu. I'm always calling it Hula. Okay. Hula, it's been on Sky Arts. Okay. No reason why, because it's just ironic. Last night, I'm not sure if BBC One or Two, is a historical user movie again about the punk scene. Yeah. David Bowie, Mark Boland, the whole lot. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and just showing and expressing how the sex scene was changing at that specific time, yeah, through the music. Mm. And yeah. it's just ironic that yours, the girl group, at that time, and like you say, it's been swept aside, show this side of it, 
and the world we're in today is showing now, as we know, Mark Bowler and Dave Bowler, they've broken barriers. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I was a big With fan the of them. Inside and everything. Yeah, so it's just I, so ironic. I saw that last night, and then seeing this today, because I'm from your era. I'm from the time I was there for the punk scene. I was there at the birth. Right. So Growing through the whole lot. Yeah. Right. I'm three years behind you. <laughs> oh, you baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, no, but it was very, very powerful. And just saying it, it was seemed to great a big audience. You know, so much can be learned from it because. I'll call you the original girl power, not the Spice Girls, the Slits. Oh, yeah. Please don't compare it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Please. Breaking the barriers, yeah? The yeah. Slits was yeah. original girl power. Yeah, you was there yeah, the time. I don't, the like the <laughs> I don't like the word. I don't like the word because it makes me think of the Spice Girls. <laughs> no, okay. Your history, darling, your modern history, you've created it, yeah? It's been yeah. done. Yeah. yeah, so, well, I hope this documentary has some effect because we were seriously written out of the history books yeah, and I just, it makes me sad for Ari because she, she's not going to live to hopefully see well, the Well, you can put it back in there, darling, you can put it back in. It's like they brought it out there in the movie, they, they were saying uh, young people were getting into it. That's right, yeah. yeah. And we're all there today. <coughs> Sorry, I'll get these covering yeah. bits, but then they go There's away. Water. It doesn't help, sorry. <laughs> Just stop. Smoking. <laughs> this is quite, quite a good moment to interject and say, um, merchandising, um, we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> Just like oh my god, I've just seen a girl with the slits. Yeah. <laughs> you can make them online. Yeah. 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 We don't make any money out of it. <laughs> just, uh, just like we're still doing our own doors, uh, we don't have any merchandising. However, just in case, um, the, you can get the movie on DVD. Um, and there is a sort of very limited edition of it that comes with a facsimile of the scrapbook that you saw at the beginning of the film. So it's a package of the DVD and the original scrap, Tessa's original scrapbook, which should be at Sounds of the Universe by the middle of next week, if you're interested. Anyway, that's the end of the sales pitch. <laughs> Okay, so you're welcome to stay for the rest of the night, S Steve and me and Doc Murdoch will be spinning some tunes and Doc will be chatting, toasting, so please stay, Oh yeah, you're up for it. Yeah, cool.